Church, welcome to our daily devotion insight. We're going to continue on a series called Life Giving Choices to Make. And that is today, number one. And number two, the choices of a grateful heart. The choices of a grateful heart. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Always be joyful and always be thankful. Can you imagine? Amazing, isn't it? You know, I have truly lived realizing the transforming power of a grateful heart. Through years, I've learned. It is my greatest antidepressant. All right, one more time. It is my greatest antidepressant as I have learned that a grateful heart and an Anxious heart cannot reside in the same person. One more time. I've learned all these years, a grateful heart and an anxious heart cannot live together, cannot reside in the same person. Gratitude has been one of the most significant game changers for my life personally. You know, I started many years ago when I face challenges, when I go through difficult times, when, when people attack me, when people ridicule me, and when people uh, 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 shame me, and people talk bad about me. You know what? Instead of getting angry, getting, getting, getting upset, I thank God for the opportunity for me to learn. You know what I do? I started some time ago, some years ago, you know, I started putting what I experienced and faced into writing. I write down devotion on them. I read the Bible to study and I prepare messages through them. And uh, with time and consistency, all this I've been doing and converting them into blessing, it changed the course of my days and brought my joy back every time. And this was a choice that I made for my life. You can make this choice too. You need to make this choice. Why? Because it's important for your future. There is so much research about the impact of gratitude and thankfulness on our brain activity and wellness. This is a topic worth researching yourself. But let me just share a few things with you here today. I believe the Word of God commands us to give Thanks in all things. One more time. The Word of God commands me and us to give thanks in all things. The Word is in all things, not for all things. We don't thank God for uh, bad things that happen to us. We don't thank God for cancer. We don't thank God for, uh, for pandemic. But we thank God in it, we can learn something. In it, we can grow. In the challenges the challenge of life, we can become stronger. Our faith can grow and build up. And, uh, you know, as we look at this, you know what? It can either push us away or it can draw us closer to, uh, 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 in God, uh, to God. It can build us up in God or it can tear us down. It depends on the way we look at it, whether with a grateful heart or with a negative heart. You know, at face value, even outside of scriptures, there are many quotes that teaches the power of gratitude, the power of gratefulness. Here are a few I want you, uh, want you to ponder. Brother David Steinras says, The root of joy is gratefulness. It is not joy that makes me grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. Amen? It is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. One anonymous person said this, Gratitude turns what we have into enough. One more time. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. Sometimes we complain, we don't have this, we don't have that. We can't go here, we can't go there. But you know what? When you learn to be grateful to God, even a small little thing, even with what you just have left, it can turn into enough for the day, enough for the week in our life. Dietrich 
Van Hofer, a German theologian, he said this, It is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. One more time. It is only true with gratitude that life becomes rich. You know, sometimes we say we don't have, but when you learn to be grateful to God, you always have enough. You always have sufficient. You always say, God, thank you for today. You know, Mary Davis says this, The more grateful I am, the more beauty I see. The more grateful I am, the more beauty I see. means that when you learn to be more grateful to God, you see everything around you are good, beautiful, nice, sufficient, positive. Even in circumstances and challenges that were all so, 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 so tough in our lives. Breen Brown said this, What separates privilege from entitlement is this gratitude. Sometimes we say, oh, I don't have the privilege like this. I don't have what you have. And uh, I, I, uh, I don't have the privileges that you enjoy. But you know what? When you learn to have a gratitude of heart, you wouldn't have to say, I don't have or what I deserve and what I entitled to. Beside the power of these quotes that we've just gone through, I treasure even more the scripture that tells me that it is God's will for me to be thankful. It is God's will for me to be thankful. I know the obedience is rewarded. Gratitude opens our eyes to the blessings of God. The transforming power in my life led to a return of joy, happiness, and peace. One more time, let's say it for about. When you and I learn to obey God and be grateful, the great gratitude of heart, the gratefulness of heart, open your eyes to the blessings of God, to the peace of God, to the provision of God, to the presence of God. And, and that transforming power of gratitude in your life, in my life, will somehow bring the joy, the happiness, and the peace of God back to our lives. I found a rich calmness to a life lived in gratitude. You know what? You want your life to be enriched? Choose gratitude of heart and you will live a power-filled journey with God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we pray and thankful that your word teaches us to learn to choose a grateful heart or a gratitude, a, a, a grateful heart. I pray, God, that you will bless all of us. Help us to look at things differently from how we, in our nature, used to look at things, all the negative and the bad. Teach us to learn to look at things that are good. Look at our God and begin to say, God, you know what? I have enough. I'm grateful I'm alive today. I'm grateful you have provided for me. I may not have what other people have, but I am content with what you have given to me and I rejoice in it. Father, bless us with a great day and help to choose an attitude of gratitude for our life, for daily living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great day, church. Blessing.